Good morning. I want to start by saying that I believe in the domestic workers and I am looking forward to seeing your collective bargaining agreements. It warms my heart to be here. When I look around, I know your participation is so crucial. They may have their trillions, they may own their governments, but we have labor start. We have the ability to communicate with each other, and we have the determination to stand up and to speak out. I also want to pay respect to my friend Dan Galeen, who is here today. Dan is not just the author, but the former General Secretary of the IUF. And I remember Dan's words to the IUF in his last official speech to the governing body of that Global Union Federation when Dan wished for us that we never lose our sense of moral outrage and injustice around us. And those words have inspired many of us for a long time. And we know that the way to do, to deal with that is through global engagement. My union has been involved globally for many, many years. My union is the retail, wholesale, and department store union in the United States. We represent workers in commerce. We also represent workers who work in poultry plants in the southern United States. And we represent workers involved in food processing. As a union, we have formed powerful alliances, not just with other unions in our own country, not just with unions around the world, but with community groups, with immigrant groups, with women's groups, with communities of faith, because we believe that as a movement, we have to reconceive ourselves, not just as a labor movement, but we have to see ourselves as the labor component of a broader progressive coalition, and that the only way forward is through alliances and coalitions. For my union, the power of international engagement has meant that when workers were trying to organize at a poultry plant in Mississippi, the IUF was able to send in a delegation of unions from around the world to make the case that the workers should have the right to organize. And that was particularly powerful because one of the owners of the poultry plant where the workers were being exploited was Henry Kissinger. <laughs> and that became an embarrassment. And we organized the workers at Choctaw Maid in Pelahatchee and Carthage, Mississippi. During our campaign, <coughs> over a strike at the Box applesauce plant in upstate New York where 305 workers at a very uh, profitable plant were forced out on strike <coughs> within 24 hours because of labor start because of the IUF. Thousands and thousands of messages flooded the inbox of the CEO of the parent company, Dr. Pepper Snapple. The strike went on for 17 weeks. 
with the employer refusing to speak to the union when he finally had to speak with us, when he knew he had to reach a settlement with us, the very first thing he said to us was, stop the social media. <laughs> Their messages make a difference. IUF, again, was the sponsor about a week or two ago of demonstrations in New York in support of the fast food workers in the United States who are fighting for their rights. And it received national attention and international attention. And workers around the world staged actions in their home countries as well. And the fact that they staged those demonstrations and stood with the workers in New York had a powerful impact in pushing forward the message of the fast food workers in the United States. Yesterday, you heard from Michael Bry from the UFCW. And my union is affiliated with the UFCW. And he spoke to you about Walmart and how international engagement is so crucial there. And Bangladesh, my heart goes out to the workers in Bangladesh. I had the honor of meeting my sister when I was in Dhaka. And I know the reason Industrial and Uni were so effective in speaking out for the workers in Bangladesh was because they were able to bring the pressure of the rest of the world into the situation. And now our message is to the world that the Walmart Alliance is nothing more than a public relations scam and the Accord is the only approach that is worthy of our consideration. And we heard this morning about global framework agreements. My union has benefited from a global framework agreement negotiated by UNI with H&M. And it was because of that agreement solely because of that agreement that we had the ability to go out and organize 1,200 H&M workers in Manhattan, in New York. The Global Framework Agreement did not mean that the company was our friend. It did not mean they were our supporters. It did not even mean that they wanted us in the stores. But it gave us the tools and the powers to be able to go in. We knew that when we had problems, we were able to go to our Swedish brothers and sisters and that they would speak to management bypassing American management and saying, you are not going to believe what is going on in the United States and how your U.S. management is behaving. And it was unacceptable. And we were able to organize the workers even though we continued to have to fight the company to do so. But today, I want to talk about something else. I want to talk to you about the Atlanta process. The Atlanta process. <coughs> Twice a year, 
a group of IUF affiliates from around the globe make the trip to Atlanta, Georgia to engage with the management of Coca-Cola. This set of meetings emerged largely as a result of a meeting of IUF affiliates which took place in 2003. Because of pressure, we were able to put on Coca-Cola. The IUF was able to secure recognition from Coke in 2005 and have this recognition codified in a joint statement between the company and our Global Union Federation. Coca-Cola is the only U.S. corporation, the only corporation anywhere in the United States that has an agreement like this with a Global Union Federation. It is the only company in the United States that is willing, not because it wants to, but because it has to, to sit down with union representatives from around the world to deal with our issues. Our membership has benefited as a result of this global engagement. We are able to deal with conflict resolution in specific cases. And this conflict resolution is expedited compared to what would normally occur. The Atlanta process has increased our access to information about the company's plans and its direction. It has strengthened our position within the company by forming relationships and networks with other unions that also represent workers in Coke. And through this process, we are able, when we come together to raise issues affecting Coke workers throughout the world, even though they and their countries may not be at the table, It's because of this process that in Pakistan, one hundred percent of Coca-Cola workers are union. In Guatemala, in Guatemala, when a worker was killed in two thousand and eight. We demanded that Coca-Cola do something about this. They said it was a franchisee. We said, who gives a damn that it's a franchisee? It's Coca-Cola, and you've got to do something about it. And they ended up taking the franchise away and buying the plant back that the conduct of the Guatemala Coca-Cola franchisee would not be tolerated. <coughs> we have seen in Swaziland that casual work has been turned into full-time jobs because of the Atlanta process. And Burju is sitting here and shaking her head in agreement because she's been responsible for much of this work. And in our own union, we have been able to take care of problems we could not take care at the plant level because we had international solidarity and we had the ability to speak to top 
management and the company and our local union management has been afraid coming to us before the twice yearly meetings asking us not to say anything too bad about them because we had more access to their management than they did. I want to tell you that we can't just think of ourselves as unions anymore. We can't just think of ourselves as operating in one nation anymore. We cannot think of ourselves in communicating in the traditional ways we have for years. We have the ability to build a strong, powerful, global movement to take on to take on the powers that exist. And we do it by coming together internationally. We do it by communicating through Labor Start and communicating every way we can. And we do it by thinking of ourselves not just as labor, but as a labor component of a broader progressive coalition. That is our future, and thank you for the opportunity.